Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of From Page to Stage. I'm your host, Wendy Corner, and this podcast is for you if you're an entrepreneur. Yes, you heard me right. It's called From Page to Stage, but if you're an entrepreneur, you are an author. You may have a solo book out. You may have an anthology book out. You may have a blog. But if you're an entrepreneur, you do socials, don't you? Isn't that a form of written, published work? Maybe you hadn't thought of it quite that way. You're already an author. But what about the stage bit? How much talking have you done about your work? Do you do lives? That's a stage. Do you do podcasts? That's a stage. Virtual summits and also live stages. So there's lots of opportunity for you to go from page to stage. You're in the right place. Welcome. Now, today, I have the joy and pleasure of introducing you to the lovely Dr. Ida Green. Ida is a prolific writer. But you know what? She knows herself a lot better than I do. So I'm going to handball this one to you, Ida. Tell us a bit more about who you are and how you came to be where you are today. Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting because I have a tendency to write about my problem. And I, my first problem, but well, it wasn't a problem, but I really am passionate about African American boys. So my first book was uh, How to Improve Self Esteem in African American Boys. And then it went from there. I really was got into a marriage that I, my first husband died. Then I married again. And because he died and I was young, I wanted to make this marriage work. Mm-hmm. I got a rash all over my body when I was about to marry this man. And spirit was telling me that was not the right man to marry. But I wanted to be married. I want a husband. I want to start a family. I ended up marrying this man. And right, right after we married, he, you know, what spirit was telling me was true. I should not have married him because he was verbally, emotionally, and physically abusive. And I was very, very angry about that. And so it took me some time to get my heart out of that. And But what happened one day, I thought, you know, I love me and I don't hit me. If he loved me, he wouldn't hit me. Maybe he doesn't love me. And I thought, oh, I'm living with someone who doesn't love me. Then I really had to take my heart back and, and take my, you know, get back into who I was. But that was not easy. Mm. I ended up being in a... Um, shelter and all that but I started writing about that and I thought you know I'm going to if this is what it is I'm going to listen to my intuition from now on so I started writing I was very angry started writing anger books and self-esteem books I just started writing about my hurt and my pain and my sorrow so now I have 24 books so I took my lemon lemons and turned them into lemonades but that's how I started writing I just write about whatever I'm feeling and they become books, but it was not never intended to be a book. It was just about me to express myself as an outlet. Right. Okay. So you find it very cathartic to get your your thoughts, your feelings on paper. Beautiful. Oh yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> okay. So Ida, where are you based? In San Diego, California. San Diego. Great. Beautiful. Thank you very much for sharing that. So that that's how you started your writing for what then became published. I want to take you back. When was, when did you start to write? Did you write as a child? Um, I had my uh, diary as a child. Mm-hmm. I wrote kept things in a diary just for healing and expressing myself. So I had my diary <laughs> with a little lock on it. <laughs> so no one ever looked at my diary. I just, yeah. Oh, so I think I realized I've been writing all my life because I had my diary to express myself, but I didn't think of it then. I didn't think until I really got into this abusive marriage and thought, I need to publish this. And I don't know who who suggested I publish it, but I did. <laughs> well done you, well done you. So creative writing, well, the expressing yourself has always been part of your life. That's beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Can you remember how old you were when you started your, your little diary? With I the thought I had my diary when I was like, I know I was 15. I could have been 14, but I had a diary. Definitely I was 14, I had a diary. Because I was had a lot of secret desires and you know, I wanted to be a nurse and all this stuff and all the 
boys I was admiring, but I knew I couldn't marry them because I had a choice to become a desire to become a nurse. I had to write about my romance because I couldn't engage in that. I, my goal was to become an RN, and that's what I did. My aunt was an RN, and I became an RN. But so I had to write about all these guys I wanted to date, but couldn't date them. <laughs> You're fixed. You were focused on becoming a nurse. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I became a nurse. Good. My aunt, Good. I, my aunt Ida was an LVN, and I became an RN. Right. So you were. Can you can you explain what those acronyms are, please? Well, one is a licensed practical nurse, which is the lower level, and the registered nurse is the one who uh, is next to the doctor. She takes orders. She runs the, the whole hospital. You know, the nurses run the whole show. The doctors just write the orders, but the nurses are the ones who carry all the work and do everything. So I, okay. I taught nursing. I, I became a nurse, and I started teaching nurses, and I started teaching courses. I did everything that was in nursing. Beautiful, beautiful. You're not nursing now, though. No, but it's because I became this. I injured myself lifting a heavy patient, a three hundred pound patient. I injured my back, so mm -hmm. I couldn't do that anymore. But once I injured myself, I started teaching nursing, right, and you know, started writing and teaching courses for nurses. So I did the the mental work, not the physical. Got it. Got it. <laughs> I just okay. got my license about five, six years ago. Right. Got it. OK, so that was when you started to write, say, 14, 15 in your in your wonderful diary. And you've been writing ever since. You mentioned about teaching when you were with your nursing teachers head on. That's obviously a form of speaking. So when did you start speaking? Was it at when you would would in that teaching role or have you been a speaker? I have been speaking my teachers saw something in me that I did not see in myself. So I was in plays in school from the third grade to the 12th grade. So I was always in plays. I really am an actor as well because I was speaking in plays. Every year they had me in a play. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. And again, for, for those of us who are not US-based, grade three to grade 12, can you can you give us ages on those, please? Um. Well, I, well, I, I was in the third grade. I think I may have been like six, seven or eight or nine years old. So from nine years old to I graduated when I was in like the uh, at seventeen, and so I was I was in plays throughout my life. My teachers put me in plays. I never put myself in plays. They just saw my speaking ability and my my presence or whatever I had. So they just put me in plays. So I just really and then I was on television. I was fifteen. My teacher in the DCT program in Pensacola, he needs someone to promote the program. So they, I was on television at age 15, but it was, I think it was just, you know, when you, when people see a gift in you, I didn't see my gifts. I, I was just having fun, but they saw it and I just said, yes, whatever they said, let's do. I said, yes. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. So you've been speaking a lot. So, so there was um, acting. You were. In, interviewed on the TV, you've been teaching. Wonderful. I have, a, I have a lifetime teaching credential, so I've taught. At the, I really once I left nursing, I became a school nurse. Then I started teaching people in, in you know in the EMTs and in nurses. I've been teaching nursing. Plus, I got what you call you got a community co teaching credential. So I'm a, a licensed teacher as well. So I've teach, taught in the public schools as well. <laughs> so all, all different forms of speaking, aren't they? And now here you are, interview style, you do presentations for virtual summits. Do you do live stages as well? Oh, yeah. I put on my own um, program to uh, um, with Speak to Self. I took a course with Lisa Sassman and I learned how to speak. So from the stage, so I sold my program from the stage and people bought it. <laughs> Great. We'll come on to your program again in a minute. So we, we looked at, you started writing that you can remember around about 14, 15 with your diary. And as you said, it, it was a way of getting out those thoughts. So the journaling is a really helpful thing. And do you still journal? Oh, yeah. Every day I do some journaling. That's how I write. That's how my books become books. 
I just love to express myself in writing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah whatever I want, I write it down. And uh, yeah, I just write it down. In fact, when I when I was small and leave, get to leave Florida to go to Chicago, I was really scared. So I had to write down what was the pros and the cons and what was going to happen because I was just really anxious. I broke out in arrest. So I did write all that stuff down before I could leave Pensacola to go to Chicago to go to nursing school. So I've always wrote, written to express myself with writing. That's great. Cause it helps to get get things out on paper. I, it? Yeah, yeah. I didn't have to express myself. Mm -hmm. I can't always have nobody to talk to, but you can always write. You don't need anyone to talk to. You can yes. write. <laughs> yes, indeed, indeed. I was talking to, I was interviewing somebody yesterday who spent some time in Zimbabwe, and they said that the only writing area that they the only only paper they had was the margins around the print on a newspaper oh. there was no other paper that they could use and so wow. they were very teeny tiny and and just used the maximum amount of of opportunity they had on that so yeah we're very blessed aren't we to be able to pick up pen and paper and just write down our thoughts beautiful okay so we've looked at your your writing we've looked at your speaking Tell us what you're working on at the moment. Well, you know, I, getting into that intuition with that man, mm -hmm. I realized that that was, um, I didn't listen to it. So now I'm teaching intuition. So that's, I am so passionate when I'm teaching that. I, I, go, I, went, I go to the psychic fairs in San Diego to give these soul readings. And I realized that I'm so passionate and so happy when I'm doing those readings because it's channeled. I'm a clear channel. I haven't always been a clear channel, but now I'm a clear channel and God speaks to me. And I don't always remember the words. So I call my clients and say, what did God tell you in that message? And But I just get so much joy out because it says things to them that I would never say to them. <laughs> in no person. words. Yep. So it gets so it gets really, really funny and it really tell people about personal stuff that they need to do with boyfriends and husband. Well, mostly with boyfriends and husband, whatever you tell them, give them some advice on what they need to do. It so just really gets me funny. It's just really funny. You know, I thought God has a sense of humor telling these people to do what they should be doing and not let boys boyfriends take advantage of them. I, it's it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> is it mostly relationship stuff that you're you're dealing with well all kinds of stuff when god speaks to me like one lady uh and i don't call myself a medium i'm a clear channel but one person had a had a problem with um someone had died mm -hmm. on the other side they were wanting to know if they were okay well they are okay but they want to check in you know they have, I don't have the problem when they did but we checked in and they were able to talk to the to the family member on the other side. So I don't always, I don't call myself a medium because God speaks to us between God and me, but God will let them go to the side if it's going to, uh, and they uh, lay their anxiety is going to be for a good purpose, then they can go. But I don't normally talk to the dead. You know, that's not something I do. Okay. Okay. So that's what you're working on at the moment. Now you, you have a number of books out. Tell us about the one that you're you're particularly focused on at the moment in terms of promoting. Yeah, the one that I'm, well, two of them. One is, are you ready for success, a spiritual journey? And the other is journey to loving yourself. And I, because I grew up in the South where there was discrimination, racism, I have been working on my self-esteem for years, my self-love. So I still have to work on that self-worth where I'm feeling worthy and I can ask for the money I want and feel comfortable asking for money because I grew up in poverty. So I still undervalue myself, my self-worth and value my contribution and don't always ask for how much I'm worth. I undercharge all the time. So I continue to need to grow in that space because I want to give, but I do need to be compensated for my gifts. And so I don't always ask for what I'm worth. Got it. Okay. So that's the book that you, you're you looking at at the moment, which is, remind us again? Journey to Loving Yourself. 
journey to loving yourself. Okay, so that's what you're writing about. That's what you have written about. When did that book come out? Well, I've I've started it early, and it was uh, what was it? Self esteem was on self esteem, and I wrote that book about ten years ago. Okay, but then it was really come out to my self worth and loving myself. So I republished it about two years ago. And now it's journey to love yourself because loving yourself is a journey that takes you throughout life. We constantly find and fault myself, criticizing ourselves. And I thought, well, I've been working on this self-esteem for years. So I've gone from self-esteem to self-identity to now I'm on my, and I've gone to the self-image. Now I'm on working on my self-worth because that's tied up with my money. And when I get that handled, I can become a millionaire and ask for what I want and Go get ahead. it. Got it. So, so uh, as you say, your your writing is actually cathartic for you because you're putting your thoughts out on paper. And you, you said in in the the information that I've got from you that you've got a couple of bestsellers in there. Oh yeah, I have. I wrote a book with one of a, a collab. I was part of a collaborative book, mm -hmm. and so I did write. It was a bestseller, but the one the person produced it and had me had my book as a part of it, but it was a collaborative. So I am a best-selling author, but they did all the work, not me. <laughs> oh, hang on. No, 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 no. You see, your that book would not be complete without you. Yeah. So it's every much your book is, it is everybody else's. So love it. Love it. Okay. So the the one, the, the, it's, sorry, the spiritual guide to success, was it? No, journey to, no, what it, it was, uh, in fact, the book that I was a part of, it no, no, just, don't worry about that one. The one that you're wanting to promote at the moment, the one that you yeah, want to show journey, up to. Journey audience. to loving yourself. Journey to yeah. loving yourself. Journey to loving yourself. Okay. Now, audience, what we will do is we will put in the show notes the, pay, the Amazon author page for Ida, and you can go and see all of her wonderful work on there because they will all be listed. Because, as I said, this lady is prolific, and there will be more. I can feel it that there will be more. So keep an eye on that page and you can see what else is coming up at the time. These show notes are dynamic, as I mentioned. And when I have a guest who lets me know, oh, something else is coming out, I go back and change the show notes and put up a quick social splash going, but that wonderful conversation I had with Ida Green, well, she's doing something else now. Go back and check the show notes. And while you're at it, have a look at that wonderful conversation again. Yeah, so I, haven't, I, haven't, I want to write a book on intuition. So that's mm -hmm. my next book I'm going to write because I haven't written one on intuition. I have right. an e-book, but I wanted a full version book, maybe about an 80 or 90 page book on intuition. That will be fabulous. So definitely keep us in touch with, with when that comes up. Excellent. Excellent. So as we've mentioned, you speak on podcasts. You had your own podcast for a while, didn't you? Yeah, but it was a lot of work to find clients and to promote it. So I love to, I love the creative part of it. The doing part gets me stuck into, I get stuck into that doing. So I love to just be the speaker, the creative part. You do the guesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's, that's fine. But the thing is, you can actually monetize being a pod guest. And this is one of the joys that I have in showing people how to maximize the, the opportunities they get as a podcast. We can talk about that off air. Audience, if this sound, sounds something that you'd like to be involved with, DM me, let's talk. So yes, we, so you, you've done your, your podcasting, you've done, as you said, the, the virtual stages. We were talking off air about the fact that you've got another virtual stage coming up soon. All of this wonderful jazz. I'm gonna ask you, Ida, how do you embody your words when you take them from page to stage? Well, what I do, I'm an expressive speaker, an expressive person. So I express my brilliance, my essence uh, through my speaking. And also my dad was a humorist and I don't claim to be a humorist, but when I speak, my humor just shows up naturally and it just, it's a joy. But I, I just let it loud to show up. It just, in my natural expression, 
of who I am, it shows up. But I would not call myself a comic, but my humor and my joy shows up when I'm expressing the words. Beautiful. So you're fully present. You're taking those words. You're embodying the words yourself, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Beautiful. And now following your intuition much better. Have you had any rashes recently? Any what? Rashes. You said that you were having a rash before you. Oh, no, no, no. I, I That was when, when I'm in the wrong place. But I now spirit guides me and I'm paying more attention. So I am constantly aware of who I'm around and I am walk away from relationships that don't longer serve me. So I'm wiser now and I don't uh, allow myself. Although I did, I adopted a boy and I stayed with that boy. After he graduated, I stayed with him much longer than I did. He finally went to prison. While he was in prison, I stayed with him. I think it was in like 10, 12, 15 years. I should have left him because he was addicted to prison, didn't want to get out. So I stayed, I felt I didn't have a, I wanted to be a mother and wanted to have a child, but I should have let him go longer than I should. Because they told me once, that, you know, you're not the kind of person that we would not put in prison. You're too positive. <laughs> but I had this need to be a mother. So mm -hmm. once I decided I didn't want to be a prison, the only way I could be a mother, be a prison mother, that I don't didn't want to be a, a mother. And I just, but that was a big choice I had to make to give up, you know, stop being that getting that need to be a mother because it was just not good for me so that relationship drained me and kept me in feeling bad and a negative place for a long long time but I had to it was something that I needed to feel because I never had my own children so I needed to get that out of my system once I no longer did, need to be a mother then definitely a prison mother I needed to let that go but it took me some time to do that yes yeah and again, as you say, there's there's the almost the tension between what the ego wants and what your intuition, your higher self, God, spirit, is is saying, and you go, mm. Mm. <laughs> and and it, it it's that tension, and ultimately you know that if you don't listen to that intuition, you don't listen to those prods from God, it's not going to work out too well, is it? Yeah, it's it's a yeah, that's what I want to teach though. So that's why I want to teach others how to do that because it was a journey for me. But I first had this woman, I went to Malaysia in 2000 and I went to a, to a seminar and then I met this woman and she was she liked me and I liked her. Come to find out when we got ready to leave Malaysia, our plane had a mechanical breakdown. So we ended up having to stay there for five more days. She put Put everyone in her condo come to find out she was in my prime Miss Malaysia. She put me took me to her house, and she started asking me questions about her government and her, and the uh, security guard and all that. Then I realized that I could channel mess from spirit, and I and I didn't need to use the Torah card or the you know or the angel card. So that's when that's been like twenty years ago that I started channeling mess from spirit. But mm -hmm. had she not saw that gift in me, I didn't see it in myself. Sometimes we don't see our hidden gifts, you know. So I, now I've been taking me 20, about 20 years now. So now I'm comfortable with channeling. And first, my, it, it, I was uncomfortable because the church, my church doesn't agree in that and doesn't talk about it. So I wanted to be a Christian, yet I wanted to be on a God. So it took me some time to say, forget about the church. This is a gift that God is speaking to me, and I just need to. So I don't talk to the people in my church about that. I just do what I need to do because when I need the prayer, I'm going to God, not back to the church or the minister. Okay. Okay. Got it. So how, in terms of your, what I'm asking for is a bit of an exclusive. I know you've got this book coming out. So how are you going to be teaching about intuition? Is it is it not something that is different for everyone? It is. Everyone has, everyone has intuition. Mm -hmm. But he expresses in a different way. So in all the people in the planet, everyone has a different way to express it. Like some people use tarot cards, some people use crystal. Uh, if, I'm just a clear channel, but it took me some time. Well, I've been away from those cards now for about 20 years, but I had to grow into the confidence 
and allow God to pour to me. I've heard, let go and let God, but it took some time for me to realize that God was speaking through me and I could let it go. I thought, am I going to be different when I look different or how I'm the same? It's just that I had to allow God to take over my body and pour through me without me knowing what was going on. So I'm so curious. I want to know what's, what are you saying? What's happening? So I don't know. So that's when I had these readings with these people. I call them, ask them, what did the spirit say to you? What was that message? Did you like it? Did, did you benefit from it? And everyone that I've talked with said, oh, this is really good. I thought one lady, I uh, one lady, this man said, uh, I did this past week. He said, I had talked to my daughter. I, I, I did not get along with her mother and when she was little. And so she has not talked to me. And that gave me uh, peace of mind. And I can go talk to my daughter because every, you know, she, she's grown now, but every time I send her money, she sends it back. So he realizes now how he needs to come and have a conversation and admit his fault and what he did wrong and talk to her. But he said that gave him so much peace of mind to know that he could start the relationship with his daughter again. But I'm not aware of those messages. I have to go back and ask them what the what was said so that they can um Do you ever record those sessions? No, because it's not for me. It's for them. And why should I record something as personal for them? They okay. paid me to hear a message and I shouldn't be snooping on what God is saying to them. You just want to know anyway. <laughs> well I mean yeah. I ask I call and ask and they don't give me all the details. They give yes. me enough value to know that it, it served them. Yes. No, I, I love the idea. Thank you very much for clarifying that. Yeah. Well, we've got, we've come much full circle, Ida. As we're winding <laughs> up, I'm going to ask you, are there any final words you'd like to share with us? Yeah, well, I want everyone to know that the, your intuition is dormant inside you and it needs to be awakened and activated. And that's my gift. I just recently had a session two weeks ago with a man and we reckon all the seven chakras in the body. And his crown chakra, after all the activation, it was still dormant. So he need to have that again so he can awaken his crown chakra. So his crown chakra, there's a crown chakra, the third eye, the third chakra. And out of all those chakras, the only two that was that we could activate and get going was his heart chakra and his third chakra. So everyone, you have the gift. So I would love to have you reach out but get my free uh, ebook, but schedule a discovery, intuition, income assessment call with me so we can see what is happening with your intuition and see how we can make that, get that working for you because everyone has it, it's dormant, it needs to be awakened and activated and that is my gift. I can help you to do that. So you well, can be I'm a light, generous. you can be a light bearer in the world and spread more light. So, and we can wipe out the darkness. <laughs> That's very generous of you, Ida. Thank you so much. That information audience will be in the show notes. So again, check out the show notes and have a look at what, what all the information there, because in the show notes, there will be the biography. There will be some time stamping on the, the, sec the sections that are, are, are critical for you to go back and listen to. And then we've got some interesting hashtags and things at the bottom as well as Ida's contact. So please do check those out. Comment, like, subscribe. You know the drill by now. Thank you so much, Ida. It's been a joy and a pleasure to interview you today. And I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Thank you again Thank for sharing your from page to stage. Thank you. When the next book comes out, we will talk. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> that will be another interview, I'm sure. I got to write it first. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That, that the slight thing comes in first. <laughs> thank you so much, Ida. All Come right. Us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you much. Bye. Bye. -bye.